Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Process Technology Part 2, Module 32. We were talking about designing of uh, EDM circuits and the way that you know you would set up the minimum resistance, particularly in purely inducting circuits, inductive circuits. And we found out, or we sort of uh, postulated that this value is uh, of the R minimum in the charging circuit is seen to be typically root of uh, L by C. However, these are only in pure inducting circuits, pure inductive circuits and such inductive circuits uh, particularly if you have EDM applications in mind are not possible. So therefore, you need to introduce uh, a sort of a huge safety factor because uh, you do not have pure inductive circuits normally in all the uh, such you know resistance capacitance relaxation circuits for EDM operation. There is always going to be a capacitative load in, in, in such a circuit. And, uh, you can actually uh, then just elevate this value from R minimum uh, of root L uh, by C to 30 times root L by C. So, there is a lot of safety factor that you are introducing for calculating this minimum resistance or critical resistance and you can at this time just borrow this as a thumb rule uh, rather than getting into the details of how uh, this were to happen. So, uh, let us now try and apply some of the uh, formulations that we have made regarding the total amount of energy that is being discharged, uh, let us say E n and also the total time for which such energy is discharged so that we could actually calculate the average power. And then with the average power, we can actually try to uh, sort of correlate what is going to be uh, the MRR or the material removal rate of, of an EDN operation. So, there have been many studies, uh, particularly empirically uh, oriented studies and in case of steels, the uh, MRR or the material removal rate has been very well estimated. I would say this has been estimated empirically. So, let us put this term here and it has been found that the MRR uh, actually uh, follows uh, a condition 27.4 times of W to the power of 1.54, where the MRR Q is in millimeter cube per minute. That is how uh, the Q uh, is represented and the power W in this case is represented as kilowatts, so, so many kilowatts. So, there is a very nice correlation between the power in kilowatts and MRR in mm cube per minute uh, through this empirical relationship. And so, if we are arriving at this exact power condition by looking into what is the average uh, average power of you know the total dumped charge through the capacitor through the capacitor res resistor relaxation circuit for a certain amount of time T c, we should be able to predict MRR pretty well uh, you know based on this empirical formulation. So, <coughs> Let us actually like to, uh, let us actually try to uh, have a numerically uh, oriented problem where we will estimate uh, the total machining time. So, let us say we have a circuit with known uh, parameters which is uh, feeding to an EDM setup and there is uh, electro discharge drilling that we are performing uh, where the target is to uh, drill a 10 mm square hole in a low carbon steel uh, plate for which this relationship holds very well the Q and W relationship that we showed in the past uh, uh, slide. So, the plate has about 5 mm thickness and uh, the, the tools that are used uh, for this purpose are made of brass, uh, kerosene is the, the dielectric fluid that is being uh, introduced inside uh, in, in the inter electrode gap. And uh, we also have uh, resistances and capacitances defined of the relaxation circuit as 500 ohms and 10 microfarads respectively. So, this has been taken into taking into consideration all the, the minimum resistance values etcetera and this 50 ohms is definitely above uh, the minimum resistance that should be uh, taken in this particular case and there is no arcing, but only sparking uh, in, in, in the circuit. The supply voltage is around 200 volts, so that is what the input voltage V0 is and uh, the gap uh, that is maintained between the 
brass tool and the low carbon steel plate is maintained at such a value that the discharge would happen corresponding to a VD or a discharge voltage of about 150 volts. So, we'll have to estimate what is the drilling time. So, obviously, there is a question of what is the volume that you need to drill first and then you look at the, the material removal rate and try to find out what is the time that it would take for this EDM um, you know capacitor resistor relaxation circuit to machine the particular 10 mm square hole over a thickness of about 5 mm. So, let us now uh, try to find out what is going to be the total amount of material. So, the total amount of material in this case that is removed is basically uh, 10 times of 10 times of 5 mm cube. So, that is about 500 millimeter cube and uh, the average power input actually has to be calculated and for that we need some uh, values like finding out what is the En. In this case, the En is half C V D square, V D voltage is already known, the capacitor is at operating at about 10 microfarads. So, we have the total energy packet that gets delivered through one spark as half times of 10, 10 to the power of minus 6 times of uh, 150 square, which is actually, uh, which actually yields 0 0.113 joules. So, let us find out the cycle time. So, the cycle time uh, is found by T c equals the R c value of the charging circuit times of the capacitor which is there times of uh, log to the base E which is natural log of V 0 by V 0 minus V T V D. Uh, please remember we are operating at a V C T value which is equal to the gap voltage V D where the when the discharge would actually start to happen. So, the voltage should be at least above V D for the uh, the whole discharge to take place and this in a ma maximum power transfer is operated typically at 72 percent of the input voltage. Okay. In this case, maybe we are just slightly off shifting because it is really not 72 percent here, it is about it shifted a little bit. Uh, had it been 72 percent, the voltage at which it would have operated was 144, in this case, it is 150. So, it is quite near to the uh, maximum power transfer condition. So, uh, let us look at what is the TC value in this case. So, you have 50 ohms times of 10, 10 to the power of minus 6. Uh, uh, farads of capacitor times of log to the base E of 200 by 50, which gives you 7 10 to the power of minus 4 seconds. So, that is going to be the uh, charging time. Typically, the sparking time is so small that the overall uh, charge delivery happens in a time equal to the charging time. And uh, having said that, we uh, try to go to the next step to sort of uh, see what is the uh, the spark frequency. Uh, MRR as you know, a material removal rate as you know is also given by total energy delivered in the sparking per second. Okay. So, you can consider this to be like half C V B square times of the frequency at which spark uh, sparking would happen which is 1 upon the uh, T c value which is going to be there. So, the average power in this case P average comes out to be E n by uh, T c which is 0 0.113 joules 
uh, times of you know let us make it kilojoules for example 10 to the power of minus 3 kilojoules per 7 into 10 to the power of minus 4 seconds this is the total discharging time uh, in which this packet of energy so many kilowatts of power is being delivered. So, this becomes equal to 0 0.16 kilowatts we already know there is a uh, well defined relationship empirical relationship which exists between MRR as 27.4 times of the total power um, which is there in kilowatts to the power of 1.54 and the Q so uh, arrived at is in millimeter Q per minute. So, we have the total MRR to be 1.633 millimeter cube per minute or the total amount of time to complete the drilling. Okay. So, time to complete the drilling process then becomes 500 millimeter cube divided by 1.66 mm cube per minute which is close to about 306 minutes. So, you can think of it that a 5 mm thick plate of carbon steel uh, takes about 306 minutes to get drilled through this process. So, therefore, this process has quite a uh, high specific energy of material removal as well as very less very very high time in which uh, material removal typically would have or at a very low rate of material removal which leads to high time of machining. Uh, but still the process is preferable because uh, you know you can uh, with this process attempt uh, some of the alloys which are very hard and otherwise uh, it becomes uh, a low yield affair if you really wanted to do metal to metal machining. And also sometimes complex shapes or cavities need to be drilled where there is no other alternative but to go through the spark machining process. So, that is how uh, you can actually design a, a RC circuit to predict the total MRR value or the material removal rates of, of, of system. Let us look at how the material removal rates vary with the different parameters related to the uh, to the system. So, uh, here we have four different trends where in one case we are showing the variation of Q with respect to uh, the, the value of R the resistance of the circuit. Remember Q is actually almost equal to some constant times of twice R C times of V D square divided by log of uh, log to the base E V0 by V0 minus VD. Okay. So, that is how uh, the uh, energy uh, frequency product kind of looks like just from the last step this VD square is out of the half C VD square C being constant gets uh, clubbed up with the overall constant here. And so, that is how you can probably think of. So, we can just write it down here let us say k times of half C V D square times the spark frequency nu uh, at which uh, which is typically this R C 1 by R C times of log of log to the base E V 0 by V 0 minus V D. So, here if we look at resistance for example, uh, it is a it has an inverse relationship with respect to uh, the material removal rate. So, basically if the resistance increases the rate should fall down okay. and so it is asymptotic here the resistance is infinity uh, material removal rate ideally slashes to 0 or slashes down to 0. Obviously, it starts at a critical resistance beyond which really the sparking condition would go away. I had just shown you how uh, a minimum resistance is needed for the spark frequency to not be infinity. Okay. So, uh, which uh, really is a condition we should avoid in uh, EDM. Uh, and uh, then obviously, if we look at the variation of uh, material removal with respect to capacitance. So, as capacitance is a proportional relationship with respect to MRR, you have almost uh, uh, you know an increase in the MRR with respect to the capacitance. Obviously, uh, the you know the clubbing of capacitance may not be linear uh, in this case because <coughs> sometimes. So, uh, the nonlinear behavior of the capacitance may really be because uh, you have a, uh, a component of capacitance also determining this factor nu here. Remember, we are operating at a certain gap voltage uh, V d which really 
depends on a lot of other parameters including what is going to be the capacitive part of the discharging circuit etc. So, uh, typically you have a contribution uh, in nu de of the of the capacitance remember the time constant that we took t was actually R c times of c which was a very critical parameter needed in all our calculations related to the 1.26 uh, tau is equal to T c criteria the maximum power transfer criteria. So, all said and done the capacitance therefore, at a higher capacitance value shows a nonlinear behavior. It may not be that important towards the beginning, but the contribution gets coupled uh, as the capacitance increases. Similarly, if you looked at the mean current obviously, uh, this is the gap current we are talking about. So, uh, the, if, the, if the current is more uh, then uh, there is going to be a, a change in the, in the way that power is uh, transferred. So, you always have to remember I square times of R s sparking resistance is the power. So, if, um, if I increases or the current increases, so the power should increase and that to a different voltages if supposing the I is more, uh, you will have more and more material removal rate because this uh, VO3 uh, is basically the input voltage and uh, uh, the power really is uh, also a voltage current product. So, if the current is more and the voltage is more obviously, the total amount of power delivered would be more and so the material removal would increase because of that. That is why uh, at a higher voltage you are having more material being removed uh, with respect to mean current in comparison to a lower operating voltage V01. This is also a very interesting uh, uh, you know trend uh, between spark gap and material removal rate and as you can see there is always an optimum spark gap uh, over which the material removal rate maximizes itself. So, uh, let us look at why that happens because you know uh, if the spark gap uh, is small let us say you know when uh, the spark gap is small the discharge voltage V d uh, is, is small. Why is V d small? As I had earlier mentioned that you have a tool and a workpiece and there is a question of breakdown of the medium which happens where the total you know applied electric field should actually be either more or equal to the breakdown electric field. So, obviously, E being equal to the total uh, you know gap voltage at the discharge point per unit the distance you know between the, uh, the two electrodes. So, at a smaller gap uh, at a lower value of voltage obviously, there would be a sparking condition which happens or arrives at. So, <coughs> because the V d is too small and MRR typically uh, you know is really a function of half C V d square and also the operating sparking frequency nu. So, V d small makes the MRR smaller. So, smaller is the spark gap here as you can see the MRR kind of declines. Now, after a certain critical limit has been crossed you know uh, or let us put it this way when the gap is too large. there is an additional aspect of spark frequency. See the spark which is created has to travel across the gap and if the gap is more and more let us say this distance is higher and higher the spark would take considerable amount of time to travel from the tool to the workpiece and because of which the spark frequency will come down like anything. Okay. So, at a higher gap the nu comes down the spark frequency comes down because of which the MRR again comes down. So, therefore, after a certain gap if you keep on increasing the gap and the frequency is the dominant term here in that case you know the coming down of the frequency will be so over dominant that the MRR will fall down all of a sudden. So, that is how this optimum gap criteria is kind of built in uh, in a in a you know EDM system. So, typically all the CNC driven 
uh, systems, uh, they have uh, as a part of the program the gap optimization where uh, this gap optimization is done through voltage sensing across the gap and uh, there is a <coughs> closed loop feedback control which actually drives uh, the tool more towards the, uh, the tool uh, more, more towards the workpiece so that it can operate at a gap where material removal uh, rate that takes place is maximized. So, it basically operates at the optimum gap condition. So, uh, that is one aspect about how the different uh, parameters uh, would lead to a variation in MRR. Let us now look at some of the uh, other circuits which are very important apart from the capacitor resistance uh, relaxation circuit that you saw in the last few slides. The other uh, power transfer circuit which is very commonly uh, used is the rotary impulse generator circuit and uh, this is typically having some advantages over the, uh, the relaxation circuit for spark generation. Uh, you know one of the disadvantages that such relaxation circuit for spark generation would have is uh, limited MRR because as you can see MRR really depends on the spark frequency or also the spark energy and the frequency is again uh, particularly dependent on the time constant which is a limiting step in this particular case because frequency really is a function of R c into c ok. So, time constant. So, if something had time constants defined by uh, you know parameters uh, of resistances or capacitances which are in the circuit the variability that you would able to be able to influence. Uh, uh, you know in determining this frequency would be very very limited and so you cannot really operate at a very high MRR in that condition. So, how else do you operate at a high MRR because uh, the industry really wants that the yield of the process is to be improved. So, one of the methods are mentioned here it is called uh, impulse generator method. So, if you look at this circuit diagram right here you can see that there is a diode which is actually uh, connected uh, across you know uh, the charging circuit and uh, you can think of that the generator produces an operating voltage where in one cycle the uh, you know it is an AC cycle that comes in. So, you are generating an AC signal here. So, in one cycle when the capacitance uh, when this particular polarity is positive let us say ok and uh, it forward biases the diode the current would go. Um, in the charging circuit and charge up uh, this capacitance. In the second uh, illustration when this becomes again reverse biased the diode changes orientation and this you know second cycle <coughs> it becomes negative and this becomes positive. So, the diode is reverse biased and it is like an open circuit. So, there is no charging which uh, uh, comes in. So, uh, what this generator does is to create a signal very quickly uh, as a function of time where with uh, different time scales you can s build up the charge on the capacitor really quickly for all those cycles where the diode is forward biased. So, the capacitor is charged through the diode during first half cycle during the following half cycle the sum of the voltage is generated by the uh, generator and the charge capacitor is directly applied to the work tool gap. So, you know as soon as the V d voltage is arrived at of the capacitor it will discharge as you know there is uh, one capacitor which is being used normally for operating uh, for the charging as well as the discharging side and uh, you know you basically adding up or building up on the voltage by charging this capacitors probably one time or many times with the positive with the cycle uh, of, of the generator which would enhance the voltage. Uh, till and until the, the gap voltage is crossed over so that there is a discharge from the tool side into the workpiece side. So, this is a very nice mode of quickly having a discharge and the velocity of the uh, or, or let us say the velocity at which the rotor would be operating of the of the generator would really determine how many quick sparks can be deployed and generally the overall uh, material removal rate yield would be higher because uh, the generator velocity can be or the, or the rotor velocity here of the generator could be changed significantly to achieve a high spark frequency condition. So, uh, the operating frequency obviously is the frequency of the sine wave 
and uh, I can elevate the motor speed so that the frequency can be elevated and so it gives you a, uh, a generally a higher MRR. Uh, although there is a problem, there is an issue of uh, not having uh, good surface finish because it is a fast process. So, uh, set of sparks can be very damaging overall on the uh, on the whole workpiece uh, system. There are other circuits as well which uh, can also take care of you know some kind of surge protection. Particularly, there is a DC source which is employed here or even a genset, and so there is a um, sort of requirement that you do not you save uh, you know the, the remaining part of the circuit from the surge which happens because of the sudden discharge across this tool electrode gap. So, we have a solid state controlled pulse circuit for this kind of an operation which really uh, used to have valve tubes uh, earlier. So, this was like more like a transistor and um, you know when current used to flow through the gaps of the uh, this kind of a valve tube or vacuum tube. Uh, it was biased to cut off and behave like an infinite resistance at some point, so that it could uh, save the other part of the circuit like an electronic control module or a, or a DC source. But here uh, during the sparking the current which flows through the gap comes from direct discharge of the capacitor as you can see here. So, this is a sort of a again you can say um, a pseudo resistor which can be controlled through the the electronic control in a manner so that the resistance can be changed uh, and typically this can be replaced now by a MOS transistor where you can control the gate potential so that there can be uh, a change in the drain source current and uh, there can be a change in the tunneling resistance because of the change in the gate potential. So, uh, this is a sort of an automatic control uh, where vacuum tube was used as a switching device and it would replace the resistance of the resistance capacitance relax section circuit. So, uh, as soon as the current in the gap uh, would cease, uh, the conductivity of the tube would increase and then it would allow the flow of the current to charge the capacitor uh, after every discharge cycle for the next charging cycle. So, that is how the control pulse circuit or the control pulse module. Uh, would be utilized. So, uh, there is a big issue of surface finish and machining accuracy as far as the EDM process goes and for that there are again certain uh, guidelines which are uh, laid out uh, through different you know iterative uh, machining modules. So, this graph here shows uh, you know the variation in the the root mean square surface finish uh, of, of a machined surface with respect to the capacitance. As you can see that at a higher capacitance if the voltage is increased and uh, the power actually increases because of uh, all this there is a tendency of the roughness to increase because of increased power. So, really the goal here is to have a controlled power delivery from the tool to the workpiece for any kind of uh, uh, you know surface finish. Uh, or, sur or high surface finish to happen in the whole process. So, uh, since the material in EDM arises from the formation of craters uh, particularly due to sparks, it is obvious that larger crater sizes uh, would result in a rough surface and uh, as the crater size typically depends on the energy per spark, this would be a major aspect which controls the quality of the of the surface. So, typically things like crater depth for example, let us see uh, they can be approximately expressed in terms of energy released per spark and there have been empirical relationships to do that earlier. I think we have studied when we talked about how the crater volume can be estimated through the, uh, the heat conduction process of, of a spark. So, we had a crater depth estimation depending on spark energy given by k 1 e to the power of 0 0.33 millimeters where E was the spark energy in joules and K was uh, K 1 was a constant ok, was a constant depending on the material and uh, uh, as such you, you, you can estimate if this uh, electrode set can be let us say a copper copper. So, if you have a copper work material and a copper uh, electrode the K 1 would be approximated as 4 etcetera. So, in general you, you have empirical formulations for an EDM process where we could correlate 
surface roughness to many of the operating parameters. So, I would like to finish uh, today at this point this particular module, but in the next module we will probably talk a little more about surface finish. Uh, also relating surface finish to uh, things like material removal rate and uh, maybe also some uh, other modalities related to EDM which would uh, relate to geometrical defects of EDM process on different work pieces. So, today we will stop here and then uh, see you in the next module. Thank you very much.